So uh, I promised the, um, the concierge team that I would make an announcement for you guys. Um, if you don't know, our, uh, our next live event is coming up on July 10th. Uh, we moved it to Saturday based on some feedback from the community, hopefully to make that a little bit more accessible to you guys. Uh, for those of you guys who've been around the work, you're interested in what it is that we do here, um, the kind of uh, energy and mindset uh, and awareness that we help people cultivate here is very different than what you may have experienced in other personal development style trainings. Uh, we really urge you to come check out what we're doing and know that if you come to an event and we don't just completely knock your socks off uh, with their experience and results, we do have a, a full refund. So if you do want to come to the event, you know you want to come to the event, you can go to intuitivemind.live to go get your ticket right now, or I think even to satoriprime.com forward slash live to get your event ticket. However, if you uh, would like to save yourself a little bit of money, um, and you still have some questions about our event, uh, we highly recommend that you get in touch uh, with our concierge team. And uh, once you have a conversation with them, we've authorized them uh, with a few uh, links that can give you guys discounts to come to the event. And they can also provide you with some amazing feedback and give you a, a better roadmap to look at, hey, where, where are you right now? Uh, what would best assist you? And then how do our programs um, fit into that? Uh, but for those of you guys who are just wanting to get your foot in the water, find out what it is that we do here before you make any sort of uh, choice or decision about joining any of our programs, uh, we always say that the live event is the absolute best place to be. So again, July 10th uh, is a Saturday. It's coming up uh, here in under two weeks. So again, if you want to uh, have a chat with somebody from our team, just in the comment box below, just type in contact me. And then our team does scour these comment boxes. They will uh, contact you on Messenger. And if appropriate, you can even set up a call with them. So contact me if you want to talk to the team. Hi, Mandy. Hi. <laughs> that was a mouthful. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Did that all in one breath, too. So um, so Mandy's a really good person to, to, uh, to have here on today's topic. And so it's a nice surprise that she's here. Um, and, and I really wanted to, I don't, I'm not the, the most fond person of giving people, uh, steps like here's step one, here's step two, here's step three kind of things. However, I will tell you from, from a marketing perspective, from what people are generally interested in, simple steps make sense. We want to feel like, uh, we have a, a sense of control, like we know what to do when a certain situation arises. So, uh, I sat, uh, meditated and reflected a bit on, um, what's going on for me and then how am I uh, handling that? Um, and I really just wanted to start this conversation with, you know, like giving you guys a, a deep insight. You know, some of you guys I know are very, very practiced in personal development space, maybe even in the healing arts and the energetic and awareness spaces. Maybe you've done some lum luminosity work. I'm not really clear because we have a pretty large plethora of people here, but a lot of you guys are, are still pretty early on in your path or you've been doing personal development for a long time and uh, you probably feel stuck. Like that's a lot of the feedback we get from our clients. It's like, it's like a plateau. Yeah. Like, you know, why did you, why did you decide to do this program with us? And they said, well, I've been doing this for a while. And the truth is I, I feel stuck in my growth or I feel stuck in my development or I feel stuck with this area of my life. So how many of you guys can relate to, to something like that? Like you just feel a little bit stuck right now. And if you do just go ahead and type in I in the comment box. Personal growth plateaus. Personal growth plateaus. And, and you know, that that's life, right? Like we yeah. humans, we get, we get plateaus. It is, it is imperceptible to think that in any area of your life, you're going to see a consistent parabolic growth that never ends, right? Like we don't see that in the market, in the marketplace when I'm talking about economics, we don't see that with our health. We don't see that with our relationships. It's like suddenly, you know, things are, are going really, really well. And then it's kind of, you know, we'll see a plateau or we'll see a bit of a dip. And these are, are natural and important um, modulations that we experience through our lives. And oftentimes it just points to it's time to rest or there's a certain situation in your life that's arising that's wanting you to just uh, place more awareness on it. I also yeah. think plateaus are sometimes an integration period. And by the way, can you guys just uh, yeah, make sure that you can hear me. Mandy because she's a little bit farther from the mic, so let us know. Um, uh, there's some I, I experience them too sometimes as an integration period. So it's like if you're you know 
kind of ascending and in, in some personal growth and then you flatten for a while, that part is actually really important to a point, right? And I think we're getting to um, this discussion is probably going to be more at the end of that plateau. How do you then go to the next um, ascension up, in, in, so to speak? Yeah. And so I'll just put this on the screen because someone just commented. Um, it says, how we respond is a major player in the events that manifest from our stuckness. I agree, right? Like n none of us can really control what's happening in our lives. What's really important is how do, how do we show up in the face of the circumstances as they shift and change? Now, um, our experience has been, as we've done more awareness and energetic practice, is that what we call reality is a specific kind of relationship to you, has a specific kind of relationship to you. It's like in the world of manifesting, right? But I don't like to talk about uh, people becoming good manifestors because I think all human beings are good manifestors. Like it's- it's Every single person, every person. Every, every single person. I, I don't realize what you're manifesting. Yeah, we find, it, we find it almost ridiculous and somewhat hilarious that there are like programs on manifestation because it is like, it's like breathing for people. They're always manifesting. The real question is what are you manifesting and why is that what's being manifested? And so the difficulties in life, like for those of you guys who've had it really, really hard or really challenging, you know, you know, probably intuitively, even if you don't know mentally, that there's some kind of energy, like a, a downward pulling energy perhaps, or like a, or a compression that you're experiencing in your body on a regular basis. And maybe you never even noticed that till I mentioned it, but if you just kind of check in, maybe start noticing like, oh, my energy is being pulled down or I feel compressed and, and it could show up like physical symptoms where it's like the throat is closing or the heart feels squeezed or the stomach feels like someone kicked it or punched it or pushed it or something like that. And so those are our indicators of a certain type of energy flow in the body. And so our impression is that reality, what I call like an organic hologram, so to speak, is in relationship to that energy output of your body. And so that most people, when they're trying to make significant changes in their life or even small changes in their life, are often very externally focused. And so they think, oh, this circumstance isn't working out. What do I need to do to fix it? And so they start applying more action in their life, finding that no matter how much action they apply, this feeling doesn't change. And so the circumstances and the way reality is shaping is not really shifting. And that's kind of the, the fundamental uh, basis of this conversation that I want to have, because when we're feeling stuck, it, it almost seems like the only thing we can do is like claw and fight our way out of it. And, and I was, I'm a, I'm a, a third degree black belt in clawing my way out of it, as I'm sure many of you guys are as well. However, like as I've grown into my awareness, what I have found is the more pressure I apply on, on this area, the more pressure I apply on myself, actually the less the changes. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, it just, it's like tension. It's like if you, if this is the external circumstance and you're fighting to make it happen, you're actually creating tension on it. At th the opposite of that is creating your energy field in an inviting way where it literally is coming to you. Yeah, correct. Let me just put this over here real quick so we can see some of the comments. Cool. So again, how many of you guys are just like tracking this conversation? How many of you guys know that like you are third degree action taker, try to fix everything, just say I in the comment box, let us know that you're, you're tracking this a bit. So before I kind of tell you the, the four steps that I've outlined here, because this is a process I'm, I'm <laughs> becoming extremely intimate with right now in my own life, uh, I just want to tell you like kind of what's going on for me. The reality is with, with all this awareness, again, we say this a lot, but almost 20 years of practice for me personally, easily more than half a million dollars invested in my personal development. I am really struggling right now. I'm like genuinely in a very, in a very difficult place, but, uh, but seen from a really different way. Right. So, uh, we just completed a, uh, a two year program with the mystery school. For those of you guys that are not aware of mystery schools, uh, said another way is these are, are really usually small pockets of places where you go do very intense awareness and energetic practices to learn the energetic and healing arts, so to speak, right? So we've basically been through a extraordinarily intensive, if you want to think of it like a PhD program or a master's program for uh, energetics and uh, healing through awareness and energetics. And so this, the way that the school particularly works is it, 
it reinvestigates the developmental process of a human being, really from like the moment you're born and the energetics and mindset that's at play there, all the way to basically full development through through the the fundamentals of being a human, which is about the age seven or eight, so to speak, right? Certainly we grow and we learn and we adapt throughout that. But a lot of you guys probably have already learned, if you didn't know before, that most of the things you're dealing with as an adult were enshrined in you from a very, very young age. Oftentimes, a lot of stuff before you can rem remember, and hopefully this is not too esoteric for this community, I, I imagine it's not, also things that happened prior to this life. It's actually called Old Souls in my life. Old Souls, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason, by the way, we call the community Old Souls and, and Seekers, right? Because we're not trying to necessarily attract the um, apex predator entrepreneur. But of course, if that's you, like you're welcome to be here as well. We're, we're, we're really talking to people who, have, who, who designate themselves as Old Souls. Uh, or, or growth seekers, re people who are really looking for how do we fundamentally shift what's happening within ourselves? How do we fundamentally shift what's happening on planet Earth? And like, how do we stop suffering? Right? Like, how do we really get to a place where we stop suffering? Like, how many of you guys, again, by saying I know that you spend a lot of your time suffering, either uh, in suffering, thinking about what you're suffering about, trying to solve what it is that you're suffering about? Again, say I, right? like, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I, I've said this before a few times over the last few months, I have a deep desire to start sharing more of the unpacking of what's happening versus what we normally see on social media, which is like, I was in this dark place. Now I'm in this great place. I'll only talk about it when I'm in the great place. And so it makes us always feel like we're kind of behind the eight ball. It's like, oh, because social media creates a, an atmosphere of comparison. Right. Like if you scroll through your newsfeed and you really pay attention to what's happening for you, you're having these either micro or even micro responses, whether it's to comment box, whether it's to making people wrong, whether it's to calling someone an idiot, or whether it's your self comparison. Yeah, or right, or comparing yourself to, oh, they must be making a lot of money. Oh, they go on all these vacations, like, oh, they have a great family life, uh, or their body's in great shape. Like, why am I not like that? Right. And then it boom, this depressed energy and boom, the organic hologram starts responding. Because it really does respond to the habit of your energy field. Any 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 thoughts? Um, things you want to share? I want to add a couple things to back up a little bit. Um, yeah, when I was talking about the developmental process and past lives. There's also lineage piece that gets carried down through your DNA from whatever lineage you came from and whatever um, has happened in those lineages. So that is also another piece. Uh, we're never ceased to be amazed at what happens in the, in our school when we're attending class. It's extraordinary. Um, and what guy is trying to say, <laughs> am I not saying, himself, am I not saying it well No, no, no. Uh. about himself? Uh, he is, he is being very graceful with what he's sharing right now about how he's feeling, but he's been in a really rough spot, like really, really rough spot. And I know it's hard to be on a live stream right now and need to share what you're saying and somehow hold it together. Cause there's a lot of emotion that I can feel from him happening right now. Yeah. And yeah, if you, if you can even tune into him, even while he was speaking, some of you could probably even pick up on it, right? There's a lot in there. Yeah. So even now, like if we can all just kind of, uh, collectively, Take a breath. <clears throat> and somehow, some way, without even if you don't have any training on this, just dropping your awareness, we call this localized awareness from your head, and just starting to drop it down towards the center channel of the body and down towards down towards your legs. Again, just starting to notice the breath, starting to notice perhaps very subtle sensations in your body. If you can do that, if you feel, if all you feel is numbness, that's perfectly fine too. And, and I'll tell you even collectively as a group, aligning people's awareness together into a more uh, spacious awareness into more grounded awareness in the body helps people like me and Mandy who are, who are quote unquote in front of you shift in our energy field. Cause there's a collective field that we get to participate in. And it makes something available that can come through for the specific group of people who are watching and participating in this right now in a very different way than what would come through if I was just trying to give you information.
Okay, it actually like helps my system find itself and track itself. And this is a, an important lesson, even though it's quite subtle, about how it is that we can be in, in relationship and partnership with other people in our lives, knowing that where our awareness is really matters. Like where my wife's awareness is when we speak to each other and vice versa really matters. Really, really matters to the quality of our relationship. Right? Obviously, you guys all know what it's like when you're talking to your partner from up here. And you're like jousting for who's right and who's wrong kind of thing versus like an authentic connection that's happening. And then in the face of turbulence or challenges in the relationship, it feels really different when there's connection and you talk about it versus right the, the mental landscape. So it's helpful. So thank you guys for all the beautiful comments. I appreciate that. Everything is always being co-created. And as you know, these are not like pre-scripted in any way, right? It's just whatever's coming up. So part of whatever is coming up is literally like a, a biofeedback loop of what we are feeling from the moment. And you guys are contributing to that. And that's true whether you're watching it in this moment or whether you're watching it later on. Yeah. And so, and so for someone like Cindy, who just said, I can do, I can do what you're saying, <clears throat> but it seems like I can't feel anything. So Cindy, just, just tuning in, right. Cause there's immediate, again, right. Comparison. Like I don't feel anything. It's a, it's really useful to know that numbness, like if the, the lack of sensation is sensation. Numbness is a sensation. Is, a, is the sensation. And we don't think of it as such, right? Right. So, so a lot of a lot of our clients, when we start doing subtle sensation work, awareness practices, energetic work, report, I can't feel anything. And then like two months later, they're just this wide open vessel of sensitivity and suddenly are getting to experience the world and themselves in a new way. So know that like, it really just starts there for some people. You you got to get guys that like the, uh, the human body and, and our energetic systems, first of all, it's way more multidimensional than we've been led to believe. It's way more complex, well, well beyond what our mind can conceive. However, what we can directly experience, that's an important piece, okay? And, and far beyond that, it's like your body is so intelligent. Your energetic body is so intelligent, depending on what happened to you as a child and what your perceptions and energy felt that you needed to be protected from, it did. And it did very, very well. And we know that it did that very well because you're still here. You survived. A, a child is so sensitive that if too much energy comes into their system, it would actually kill them. And so we actually have... Same on too little. Yeah. So we actually have protection mechanisms to enable us to, to kind of manage this flow of energy. But eventually in that habit that the body's created, the energy gets locked up and that's where like identity starts forming around certain things. And so numbness could be a really useful protection mechanism for a child that's being overstimulated all the time. Do you understand? Or for those of you guys who are hypersensitive, hypervigilant, you know, maybe you had an abusive parent and for your system, it was really effective to be able to like get really big and sense the field because if mom and dad came home, you needed to know whether you were safe, needed to hide, or needed to do something specifically, and so your system developed into this uh, hyper, re like hyper awareness, right? And so now you feel like I'm so sensitive, I feel everyone's stuff. But you got to understand that was the intelligence that your system created, and so this intelligence, we really want to start honoring it from a place that it's a gift, right? So, so just to kind of backtrack, so what we the 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 last module that we did with our community was the first one we got to do in person in about a year and a half since COVID began. And it's very profound when people with that level of awareness come together, it helps you drop into states that you simply cannot access on your own simply because the field intelligence is that much more rich. And when you're in that field, it just creates opportunities for experiences that are on par with uh, some psychedelic experiences and, and maybe some that are even beyond that because there's no tool being used. It's literally just energetic fields from people who are, are highly perceptive and aware. It's very potent. A group field is very, very potent when you are cohering it so that everyone comes together in a, with a, this, a similar intention. Correct. And Christine is mentioning here, this is why some people become overweight. And that's something I mentioned sometimes in our programs, the people who have a really tough time losing weight, it's actually your physical body's protection mechanism. It has built a capacity to separate it from itself from the some atrocities that it dealt with as a child right i won't go into all the psychology behind this but the body basically the mind organizes the energy field of the body and then the physical body reflects that 
So then for some people, if they start losing weight or they go on these diets, the, the safety of the body starts diminishing and the body starts going, I'm not safe. I'm not safe. I'm not safe. And it, you kind of subconsciously or unconsciously start reaching for food as a way to start feeling safe again. Right. We all know we can use food to kind of avoid stuff. Right. And then the body starts gaining weight again. It hits its whatever it needs to hit. And that safety is kind of found, but it's not authentic safety, right? Because it's just the neck it's waiting for the next poke, so to speak, before it feels unsafe. So what we're looking for here is not like how we avoid things through like drinking or eating or sex or any of the other things that people do as addictions, which are not wrong. That's just what we've learned through the society and through social norms about how you deal with things, but it never really gets you fully safe in the system. And so over the last five years, where we've kind of stepped really much more into the energetic practices, what we got interested in is not how do we like manage our system, is how do we actually retrain it from within fundamentally to start feeling safe again. Okay. And so before I I tell a little bit of the story here, so this is why transformation doesn't always look the way that people perceive because they think, oh, I've had the insight. I can think different about it. That's true. Often, I can't tell you how often you hear people say, I know that, or I've heard, I, I understand that. And it's true. You might know it very well. You might understand very well, but the body doesn't fully believe it. You have not embodied that belief, that, that important piece. That's right. So even for yeah. example, like with um, finances are really, really common one, right? Um, I, you can repeat a mantra to yourself all day of, I'm going to be well, I'm wealthy. I'm do, my business is successful and you can have a lot of money, but if the body doesn't feel like not in a scarcity place in an embodied place of abundance, then all of those thoughts are not changing much. It's going to be a consistent loop. So this is true of anything. Yeah. And, and so the mind kind of has a different speed, we could say than the body. The body is like the, you know, is like this like patient thing, almost like a, a cruise liner that takes a long time to make a turn. And the mind is more like a speedboat. It can make the turn very quickly. So the real question is, how do we not just reprogram what's happening up here? Because anyone can have an insight. Anyone can, well, not anyone, because some people choose to not have insights. They choose to stay in a certain paradigm and, you know, they're very stubborn about it. That has to be a personal desire to look and challenge your own ways of thinking. Right now, for those of us who happen to personal development, we feel more malleable in our thoughts. You might have a lot of really profound insights very quickly and start noticing, wow, I can change this. I could change that. I could change this. But then you notice you still feel the same internally, even though you have the thoughts and the awareness. And so there's this almost like a pulling that happens as like the two systems seem to be going in different directions. Again, that could be very, very, very frustrating. I know I've dealt with that frustration many, many times because I'm like, I'm aware of what's happening can't help the way that I feel. Right. And then there's actions. Yeah. It's a layer, like the, the mindset piece is layer one, but there's this whole thick layer underneath that is the embodiment piece. Yeah. And so Natalie's asking, is it self-sabotage to bounce from alignment to addiction? I wouldn't call it sabotage. And again, like notice, notice the judgment that comes in there. Natalie, Natalie is a student that's worked with us for a few months now. I just want you guys to get that. That is the perception from outside. There's, there's always going to be a modulation guys. Like think about how everything in the universe spins. Everything in the universe is kind of a pendulum that's seesawing back and forth. There's always what's called a titration or a toggling that's going to occur. Like I'm not always in well-being. Okay. Like that's what this conversation is about. Even with all the training, I'm not always in well-being. What I do notice is that I spend longer and longer periods of time. So like more windows of well-being. And what I want to say here is, is that oftentimes when we're experiencing more well-being, the body's starting to feel safer. And as the body feels safer, it also has an opportunity to release more. Okay. Because what is required for any sort of healing to happen is for the body to relax and feel safe. I'm going to just say that flat out. No healing occurs until you feel relaxed and safe. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Consider what your definition of safety is because we, we often don't think of it as, oh, I'm not feeling safe. The way we experience it can be such a spectrum of things. But if you go to the deeper, deeper, deeper layer, it's like, oh, I, I just don't feel safe in this situation. So like what, like notice the things that are present for you 
and see if you can go a layer deeper behind that, what's underneath that, whether it's sadness. Sadness is often, it's always tied to safety. Um, depression, anxiety, tied to safety. Frustration, anger, tied to safety. Yeah. So just notice what the top piece is for you, even if you don't identify it as safety in yourself. Yeah, and, and that's a really good point here. So again, how many of you guys know that like you're feeling these type of frustrations? Like you just, again, say I, like you know that you're highly aware human being, you're quote unquote woke, and yet like once in a while or maybe more often than you would like, these things come and they really like, they nail you and you kind of get off your game, right? And so what Mandy is pointing to is really important because oftentimes we're really, most people are really dealing with the top layer, which is what their mind is saying. I don't, it's important. It's an yeah, important first step. For sure. But a lot of us have been on the top layer for 10 years. Yeah. It's time to move on. Yeah. It's like, we, it's like, you know, and so we forget, we forget to dig beyond like the topsoil and we're like, oh, um, I don't like that. So and so did that to me. I don't. Um, I'm not making enough money. I don't like the way I look in these jeans. Like, you know what? It's like anything can throw you off. I remember, like, I was in a full bliss state four or five years ago, and like, I was trying to change this light bulb in my shower, and I, I bought like five different light bulbs over like a two month period, and like none of them fit. It was just one of these weirdly fit light bulbs, and like. I literally spent two months in bliss. I was trying to change this light bulb. I got so frustrated with the light bulb. I actually fell out of a high state of awareness and fell out of my bliss state because of a light bulb. Like, you never, you never know what's gonna happen, right? And this is like years back. So to kind of tell you guys a story, we, we were in a, a part of the developmental uh, cycle that honestly, much of the Western world is stuck in. It's called like this, like, ver like a very rigid type of structure. and. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. And, and this, uh, and this rig rigidity rules my life, right. In certain ways. And so, uh, around this too, for me is like, um, many experiences of, of violence, uh, not in this lifetime, but what seems to be in other lifetimes. Right. And it's hard to tell is these, sometimes it might be future. Like I've, I've have many memories on plant medicines and dreams uh, and meditations where either violence is being done to me or I'm doing violence to another. And these are such visceral, real experiences. It makes Hollywood look like a freaking joke. And so you can imagine that it's very frustrating for my system, for me, to feel like I'm being attacked when, it, when I don't actually have evidence for that in my life. And so there's, it creates a lot of confusion in my system. And so there was a, uh, an experience, um, at this last module with this uh, mystery school that we were at that centered around me, uh, that was both exhilarating and terrifying all at the same time. And without going into the whole story, and for those of you guys who are in programs, I'll tell it to you more thorough. Uh, but basically like I went into an experience and that started a healing experience for about 30 other people in the room. 40. 40. Okay. 40, according to my wife. Right. More than half. And there's at least 60. Yeah. And so like, and again, this is going to may sound weird if you haven't been in these kind of environments, but it's like everything from people like falling to their knees to people like literally having panic attacks and can't breathe. And because it, it is a, we're all so connected so much more than we realize that we'd like to talk about it, but we don't get to see it, that our energetic systems are both are, are the medicine for each other. And so I got to see an energy come through my system and then roll through a community of human beings where literally the, the staff at this place did not have enough support staff to help the amount of people that started going into healing experiences. Okay. It was like people were just like literally dropping. popping boom, off. Boom, right? boom, like, boom, boom. Like, yeah. And it wasn't like a little bit of anger, frustration, discomfort, sadness. It was like the deepest anguish you could feel in a person that was being expressed out of them. And it was an incredibly profound experience to be a part of. And like for anyone that's been following us for a while, you know, we do all the crazy weird things from plant medicine to everything in between and energy work. This was one of the most profound. It's yeah. hard to explain in words without you know, having the visual, well. yeah. but it, it, it was so, so, so profound. His expression, his authentic expression of what he was experiencing internally. And he just let it go. He really, for the first time, just let it go completely. And knowing he was in a safe environment, 
and our instructors that are incredibly skilled that were able to hold and meet him in a certain way to be allow his energy to unfold it was profound that was his power he was allowing that authentic expression of mostly anger fear and terror coming through him it got expresses really like scream after scream after scream for a while. He was screaming at the top of his lungs. And I felt the relief in him as that was happening. I was sitting right next to him. And it it's, it's more, I want you to understand, it's more than just giving other people permission to express. It was so much deeper than that because permission to express is still on the mind layer. This was in an energetic way. It was as if a nuclear bomb was rippling through an environment the power that came out of him because of this, that I could feel that that's the power he has been holding, but he allowed the expression of it, not through the way he, his mind wanted to, because that's how he's been doing it. Yeah. This was the mm. way his body, his, his energy field, his body, he just let go and surrendered into it. And the, it, the results were incredible, incredible. <laughs> Including me, I was a mess. I was crying. I felt terror. I was screaming, and all of the experiences I was having had nothing to do with this lifetime. So it was either past life or lineage or some sort of thing like that. But it was extreme terror that was coming out of me. I was crying hysterically. I was screaming, and I had no logical. Uh, well, one, in that moment, I wasn't in my mind at all. I was just letting the experience happen. But two, if I went into my mind and being now looking back at it, there's no reason. Yeah. I don't have a I don't have a real reason for it. So sometimes we even guilt ourselves. I'm feeling this way, but I don't have a reason for right. it. You don't need a reason. Allow yourself to feel the way you feel. Yeah. And even um, who was it, Natalie, that was saying you felt uh, what uh, can you scroll back for a second? Yeah, she said she felt bad after doing the event here we go this one right here we go um yeah after the intuitive mind really bust me wide open and took me weeks to integrate yeah, yeah so it's a really important thing right there go ahead it, yeah it takes we it takes weeks to integrate but also it was regarding the drinking sorry oh, it was okay. regarding the drinking okay. you said something about your um feeling surprised you said you felt surprised actually that feeling of feeling surprised is fantastic because you've gone to a place where that's unusual for you and the surprise is coming from, this is unusual. In the past, you would have never been surprised because it was a norm and you wouldn't have thought twice about it. So the surprise is actually a really good growth um, measure in a way. So allow yourself to be, be okay with that and, and to see the progress and to allow the surprise to then be like a teacher for you and a little nudge or a little reminder, whatever it is, but, but actually celebrate that this is now a surprise for you where, where in the past it wasn't. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Nithya, yeah, we, we, uh, just, she asked who facilitated the experience. We, we were part of a, a two year mystery school, which is kind of like a, a master's program in a, uh, energetics and healing. Yeah. So very, very skilled, um, healer, but several of them actually. Yeah. It actually ended up being a kind of a collective experience in this particular one. Um, because of the, the, the size of the thing, like Mandy said, it was like one of the most fantastic, like in 20 years of doing spiritual work, even with all plant medicines and shamanic work, I've never seen anything like that. I would say it was the single biggest spiritual event I've been a part of. Um, so that's saying quite a bit <laughs> considering how many, how many things we've done. So it was, it was shocking. Like it, it's a shocking experience and she's saying it's so beautiful to watch. Like my experience was not beautiful. It was like somewhere between horror and then like uh almost like the part that is incapable of of noticing or wanting to take on that you have that much power so like i'm i'm really modulating with that there's that much power in the system that could create that kind of experience and so i'm, I'm saying all this because like no one can promise you an experience like that not even our programs it, it, and if you go into a program, you're like, this is the thing. I got to cut through this thing. You're applying undue and unneeded pressure on your system. Because it's just like in our experience, it's just not how it works. Things have timing. There was a lot of precursor five years. I'm saying week in, week out, daily practices that I have been doing for five years to even allow and enable for me to go to a place like that to do 
to do that level of energetic work in my own system. Like there was a year ago, I wouldn't have done that work. No chance. So I really want to just say that again, because safety, like when we think of healing, we think of like, I don't know what people think of, but like, I think of repair. Like I'll speak for me. I think of like something got repaired in the system. Okay. Now, again, if I even took that experience that I just kind of described here for you guys, and I tried to really put it into words, it just wouldn't do it justice. And it needs to be directly experienced. And so again, like this is why for those of you guys who are like on the fence about coming to one of our programs, come to one of our programs, not to understand what we're talking about, to directly experience what we're talking about. Because if you think you need more mental architecture, you don't. A lot of you guys are really, really smart. And, and if you need the mindset part, we have systems to support you with that, to help you. Because a lot of times when you get to these places like I, like I am right now, it's very easy to take yourself back into old stories. Oh shit, here's that thing happening again. Oh, I must be that bad person again. Oh my God, this looks just like that. That's where the mindset can pull you like into a really bad direction instead of becoming aware and noticing, oh, I don't have to create stories about this. I can experience what's happening and that's what's really different. But I, I can, just to be perfectly blunt, I have spent uh, the last week off and on losing my voice. It's still not fully back. Maybe this is the way my voice is going to be going forward. I don't know. It may have just completely changed. Um, I am pretty much spending a few hours every day in what feels like depression, um, sadness, and spending quite a bit of time crying about things that do or don't make sense to me in and around my life. And there's a... Um, there's like a, a really beautiful energetic orchestration that you can start noticing how like when you're in this place or really any place in your life, the field is orchestrating itself not to harm you, but to support you. I was just watching uh, the movie Interstellar. If you guys have seen it, say I, it's a really beautiful movie. And there's a, a, a little conversation that the two main actors are having in there. And she says, I don't believe, um, she says, I don't believe nature to be, um, what does she say? She was basically trying to say, I'll paraphrase here, that like, that nature does not cause harm on purpose. She goes, I fear nature. I'm afraid of it. But there, oh, she said, nature's not evil. That's what she said. Right. And she goes, there are certainly things to fear, but it is not inherently evil. It's not trying to do bad things to us. And, and I think that applies to all spirituality too, and to all energy and to all circumstances in your life. And I know some of them have been so hard that it feels like, sorry, that one hit me pretty hard. Because some of them have been really, really hard. that it just seems inevitable that evil is being done here. Like what else could it be other than evil? And I'm going to tell you again, even from experiencing so much of that in my life, that what I see is the perfection and what's trying to be revealed, which is significantly more compassion, significantly more awareness, significant more uh, connection, authentic connection between human beings. And we kind of have to go through this muck to see the whole picture in different ways. Even, even the facilitator that I worked with who I admire and it's someone I really look up to said, he told me, I'm jealous of you. He said, because somebody who's experiencing this, what's sitting on the other side of them, on the other side of it is just an intense power that is hard for me to imagine. Now I, I get what he's saying and it's not like I'm like, yay, this is such a fun experience. It's not, this is discomfort. This is displeasure. The only difference now between what, how I would have approached something like this three, four, five years ago, even with 15 years of personal development, I would have been trying to manage it. I would have been trying to understand it. I would have been trying to figure out what to do about it instead of just being with it and being in awareness with it. And again, for those of you guys who are like, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Maybe it does make sense. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm curious. Come to the live event. That's what it's about. It's so you can, you can open up an awareness. By the way, guys, understanding is not awareness. I just want to let you guys know that. Those are two different things. Understanding why you're reacting, understanding how you can, you know, navigate that reaction or manage that or use nonviolent communication or NLP on yourself. Those are all good. 
And yeah, in, in a way we could say, oh, you're an aware person. However, that is significantly different than actually being awareness, being in your awareness. Okay. So is there anything you want to add to them? Sorry, I know I kind of went on yeah. my own little tangent here. I want to reiterate what Guy experienced would not have been possible without a room, a large room full of people that were creating an inviting and safe environment for him to release and then for him to realize that that release is okay and that these people around him are not out to hurt him, kill him, whatever the past stuckness has been in his mind or or any ulterior motives. He had to have that full expression. Someone in the chat mentioned having ADD and that being connected to crying as a baby and being ignored. And and you mentioned the minis. Um, I won't go into minis because I think you do that with a handful of your students. Minis came from Luminous from our school. Um, and yes, this that is the idea. You are co-regulating. Mm. Someone is receiving the authentic expression of you in a safe container and you are expressing. And that expression is then being mirrored by their alignment. They are holding alignment. If the other person is not holding alignment, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. There's no template for you to receive. The important thing about doing group work is that you are now receiving from another individual the template that you are missing, that all of us have missing templates in our lives. It would have been impossible for him to do this by himself. He was trying to do this by himself for almost 38 years. Yeah. Like I said, 20 years of study, but the 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 18 years before that were no less, you know, were a huge struggle, right? Yeah. So so kind of what, what Mandy is saying is that there is healing work to be done on the one to self level. There's healing to be done on the one to another level. And there's healing to be done on one to group level. It is why we've designed our programs the way that we've designed them, by the way, because we understand that you can't sit at home and read the book and heal yourself with a one to another. Try like, I don't care how much relationship work you do by yourself. The moment I remember, I, this is, I remember this happened to me. I had done like six years of work between relationships and then I got into a relationship and it was like, it was like I had learned nothing. Like all the same stuff came up and I was like, what the hell? I just literally spent six years of doing. Why? Because I had no one to relate to in an intimate space. And so the moment that came, great, I had the awareness. Now it was like, we got to put this to practice. We got to be here while I'm co-regulating with another human being. Now, a lot of us too, when we're doing healing work, we go back into environments that don't know how to receive us. And so you start sharing yourself in an authentic way and you get shut down or they don't want to hear it, or they don't know how to receive you because they don't literally do not know how to regulate their own systems to receive what you're saying. It's triggering their parts. You guys know this. A lot of you guys know this. You've, you've done healing work. You go talk to your partner. They get really upset. It happens between us. They get really upset and it's very confusing for both parties. And you're like, what the fuck? Like I was just trying to share something so beautiful with them. Like, why are they going off the handle? Like how many guys have had that experience? Say, I, because it's like by you starting to share something so vulnerable is actually triggering parts in their system that they're not aware of. And they start going into pattern and their pattern is like there's avoidance or anxiety and they can't hear that. And then so they start responding harshly to you because what their energy is saying is get away from me. I can't deal with this right now. They literally do not have a capacity to hold what you're talking about. And so in that way, you're not it, it unconsciously creates ruptures in both directions. Because there you are in the middle of a healing integration experience trying to share yourself in order to integrate. It's not received and you go, oh. So when that happens, when it's not received, it is making that muscle, so to speak, stronger. Because it's like, yep, I knew it wasn't safe. I'm going back in. I knew it wasn't safe. I'm going back in. So this, this piece about having someone receive you in an aligned way without an agenda in a place of unconditional acceptance and compassion is so important there's no substitute for it yeah there really isn't and so we will we want to be really mindful of this because we try to take our healing and like force it on other people they need to understand they need to know right and and so we have this thing we we remind our clients often it's like you signed up for this they did not and you gotta you gotta know especially with the work that we provide here when it comes to the energetic and awareness space it's actually not 
it's not the same like when you're doing personal development and you need to share to for them to understand your energy system is literally reconfiguring itself and what you will find is that your your people around you especially the closest ones to you are always 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 responding to the the energy field inside of your body okay negatively positively it doesn't matter and so as that reconfigures and as that energy flow changes and the frequency changes so too will the way they respond to you it's just kind of this automatic shift that happens you don't need to explain it to them you, do, you don't need to berate them oh you got to get where i'm at you got to get where i'm at you will just start seeing things that don't make sense you're like wow they have never done that before they've never responded that way before this is amazing and so it's even it's even more amazing to watch that happen because you suddenly realize that not only is transformation between ourselves, our partners, relationships, whatever that matter to us, or those type of relationships, is that global transformation is not something we need to convince people of. It is literally doing your own internal work. It is no longer having a mediation between you and what we call the divine or the field. God is a pretty loaded word, so I, I hesitate to use it. But like, you don't need mediation. Yeah. You go inside and there's awareness. And a, the beautiful part about awareness is that awareness teaches awareness. So the more you sit in awareness, the more your body automatically learns, the more healing that is present. But again, I want to remind you is that as safety is something that enhances itself in the body, the body starts feeling safer to release things that are very deep in the system. And so oftentimes what starts coming up for people is these really intense emotional experiences or sensations that they may have not felt in this lifetime or may have not felt since they were little kids because the trauma was so great that the system had to freeze and lock that up. And so when the fluidity comes back in, ah, the energy starts moving. And then of course there's, you know, these layers of discomfort that come with it. So if we start managing that again, we just kind of put it back in the box. If we watch it again, we let the intelligence of the body, this divine intelligence that we all have within ourselves to just kind of go through its paces and, and work through that. It's more challenging yeah sorry honey it's more it's it's more challenging obviously when we're running a business as we do like our, our company just turned 10 years old i don't know if you guys are aware of that so we're part of the one percent of the one percent um it's even more challenging when you're in a relationship it's even more challenging when you're raising a two and a half year old like we are and you're not feeling your best and you wake up in the morning and it's like where's my energy gone where's my motivation gone like it's not uh, i'm telling you like it's not today is not an easy day for me to show up uh, and do this because usually i'm like so excited to be here. And today I'm like, oh, you know, my energy is really, really low, but it feels wonderful, by the way, to share with you guys vulnerably at the same time. So I told you I'd give you four steps <laughs> and we're, we're kind of at the end here. So I just wanted to, I, these are the things I wrote down because I'm like, what's changed about how I approach things like this. So again, I want to just invite you really quick before I, I read this is to just take a deep breath. And start noticing the breath as it enters the body. And then dropping, because you're probably listening from here, just dropping the awareness somehow, some way, down through the center channel of the body. Even if you don't know exactly what you're doing, that's perfectly fine. And down towards your legs, your butt, your hips. And just notice if there's any shift that occurs as you do that might be like a spaciousness or a calming or settling. Even as you guys join me in this, I feel more settled. I feel like I want to slow down. And it's okay if you don't feel anything. Yes. So just acknowledge that. Just say, okay, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. And so just so so we're just in the noticing of what what's occurring, what's emerging right now. And what might be for you is like, I'm confused. Okay, so so notice the confusion. That's what there is to notice. Not to fix the confusion not to change the confusion. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's sadness. Maybe it's anything else that's arising for you. Begin with, oh, that's interesting. Let's let's observe that that's arising now, right? Because you're hitting something in the system that's beginning to create an experience. So that if you want to think of it, it's like there's energy flow in the body. There's an energy body. And the mind is looking down and it's doing its best to interpret what's happening to you. But it's doing so through a lot of filters that it's created through conditioning and trauma and society and government and school and all these different things that we've been conditioned through to look at things in a certain way. And it, they may not be that way at all. And in our experience are not that way at all. They're way, way bigger than we ever imagined, way more complex than anything that we have words for and, and significantly um, 
uh, more like captivating, uh, more compassionate, more loving, more sporadic and spontaneous than any of us have ever imagined. It is suffice it to say what the things that we get to see in those rooms when we're working with these energy schools, with these uh, mystery schools, is stuff that looks a lot like Hogwarts. It really is. I mean, it, it's X Men school. Yeah, it's it's basically X Men school. It is people who have learned how to cultivate awareness and energy in such a way that they can take all this energy that lives all around us and, and, and in between us, and they know how to harness it into a focal point in a, in a person's body or different things like that. So think of like the difference between light that's being dispersed or a focused laser, right? That's just light. A laser is just light, but that focal point is very hot. Same light that's all around you all the time, but you focus it and it suddenly becomes very hot and creates a different response to the point where you can laser cut things and literally precisely maneuver around. So these are not, these are, these things that sound like sci-fi and there could not be more science fact, right? They're basically like science fact. And so this is spiritual science. It's been around for forever and we're learning because we've forgotten. Okay. So it's important to give yourself that space to just be the student again and learn. So the first thing that we've kind of have talked about here today is like, number one is slow down. <laughs> just slow down. Because you're going to be listening to your mind, churning out ideas about how to fix things, how to change things, what you got to do, why this didn't work, why you're to blame, why they're to blame, why you're wrong, why they're wrong. It's going to do all those things. And so you're going to get hyperactive with your activity. I'm, again, third degree black belt in, in overaction when things aren't going well. Because I know myself to be a clever person who's smart and can problem solve and can get myself out of tight jams when they occur. Problem is the tight jam just comes up again. Uh, I've never seen anything change that way until I've shifted what's happening internally ever. Okay. <clears throat> so, and the next thing is, is like kind of what Mandy mentioned. It's like, it's starting to ask a deeper question, not just why is this happening, but it's like, what am I feeling? And I don't mean like emotion. I mean like sensation. Because emotion is the interpretation that your mind has about what's happening. Oh, I'm sad. Oh, I'm angry. Okay, maybe. But it's like, okay, great. So like, what's underneath that interpretation? Like, what's the actual sensation that you're dealing with in your body? And then not doing anything about it. That would be step number three. Okay, so like having some kind of practice, an awareness practice that allows for you to sit with what's going on in, in awareness and just allowing it to unfold like you would watch a flower unfold or anything in nature unfold, the sunset drop. Like you're not sitting there going like, oh, the sun's gotta go down, I need orange colors, you know? Like, yeah. But that's how we are with ourselves. We're so harsh. We're such a harsh critic to what's going on in our systems, <clears throat> especially when it's not ple pleasant, especially when you're in pain. Who wants to sit there and watch pain? But like, or say, and that's the capacity that, again, if you come to our programs is the beginning of building those kind of capacities. It's like, how do you really sit in awareness without changing it? How do you invite in an experience not to change it, but actually be in participation with it so it can move through your system once and for all move through your system. Like that layer is gone because it's moved through the system. Like imagine that. And so that layer that the mind is constantly responding to, that has probably been responding to for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years for some of you guys, the mind doesn't have to respond to it because the layer is just gone. It doesn't need to interpret. It doesn't need to figure out. It doesn't need to plan. It doesn't need to do all those things. And I want to just offer here again that we are in intelligently connected to a divine resource, a loving resource, a non-judgmental resource. And you are spawned from this and you're continuously connected to it. And most of us have just cut ourselves off from it and we no longer leverage it. It's like the umbilical cord was cut. We don't believe that we're going to get food or water or air. And so we have to suffer and survive in order to get those resources. And it's like the, what we have found is the umbilical cord has just never been cut. It's just right here, right in front of us all the time. It's just reconnecting to it. Okay. So not trying to change things. And then the last one, again, we've kind of talked about all these a little bit, is asking for support. Um, and I'll, I'll recap them again before we close here. Asking for support 
Uh, it's what our community is built around. Um, Mandy mentioned minis. Some of you guys don't know what that is. It's a certain practice that we do uh, in presence with another person. Probably the best practice that we have ever learned. And it's like, so number one is reaching for support. Number two is receiving support. Okay. So one of the, okay. yeah. So one of the, one of the biological needs and anybody who's had a child has seen this process a million times, you know, your little boy or your little girl, when they run up to you, they run, 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 they go like this. When they put their hands up and to like pick me up. So this is called a, a reach and response, right? A child is reaching out and is looking for a response. So reach out and looking for a response. And by the way, guys, just for like integrity here, don't explain to people what minis are because it, it's a it's an experience. It's not a practice we want to just like, hey, you do this, you do that, because we want to make sure people are doing those practices in integrity too. So like this reach and response thing that children do, adults never stop doing. We just kind of do it now internally in our system. And so when we reach and don't get a response, it's another oof. And it and it rehabituates some negative pattern in there. So we want to make sure that when you're reaching, you're getting a response. And that's extraordinarily healing. Okay. So again, just to kind of go through these is number one is slow down. Number two is like, what's the deeper thing that the emotion not the thought straight to sensation. Number three is having an awareness practice that allows for you to learn how to sit with what's occurring and letting it arise and unfold naturally. And the last one is asking for support. PS, the meditation that's here in the group. Uh, is a practice of, of how to do these things and how to begin cultivating this type of energy and awareness. So if you're not doing that meditation, the invitation is to absolutely go grab it. If you don't know where it is, just let us know in the comment box and we'll direct you. Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to add? Yes, I have three things to add, actually. Please, good. <laughs> Someone asked um, if you are not experienced in the energetic world. I I'm sorry, I'm kind of like butchering the question a little bit. But around if you're not experiencing energy work to do energetic practices. Um, and I would say if your heart is, if you have this desire that something is pulling you towards it, absolutely do it. You don't need the mindset work first. They are not separate. They actually are one piece of a whole. So it doesn't really matter which side you go on first, although the mindset work helps a lot. The ideal is to do both simultaneously if you don't have experience in the energetic work and you haven't done much mindset work. But again, don't let the lack of not doing something hold you back from moving forward on something that's being called to you. My suspicion is from the question, your heart has a desire and your mind is asking the question that's coming a little bit like, you know, in, in the way, so to speak. So move forward on what feels right for you. It's not a requirement. The other piece is the safety that we've been kind of talking about over and over. This is a really big piece. And I, it's m my biggest desire for doing my own inner work. I've seen this visually on ayahuasca before, but I feel it in, in our everyday life. The work that you do for yourself is the work, is humanity's work. Yes. The world is, and I don't, I'm not saying this lightly. I'm saying this very directly. We have a, a, an illusion that we are separate beings. But the truth is we are all come from one source that is highly interconnected, even though we seem to have these separate lives. When something clears out of you, it is also being cleared out of the collective. Yes. And it allows for more safety to be integrated into the collective, into your children's lives, into your parents, into your family. It is not just your own work. It is an illusion that we are only doing this for ourselves, and that we are separate from anything else. It is absolutely the opposite. So please keep that in mind. And the, the final thing is, um, I just want to acknowledge my husband because mm. he has truly been having a really hard time this last, these last couple weeks. And I don't think, I, I, I know it's easy to see like how, much is going on, but it's not like you don't really feel how much care he has. He cares so freaking much, you guys, about this company, about people, about bringing transformation into the world. It's such a deep, deep part of who you are. Mm. Thank you, love. And I just want you to maybe receive from some love from all the beautiful people that are on here. So if you guys could just take a minute and just send him some beautiful love in some way, whatever way feels good for you, because he's been through a lot. Thanks, guys. 
Uh, feels inappropriate to transition, but <laughs> I wanna. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say here. See that even after I shut off the end stream, uh, the stream. So if you guys wanna keep sending whatever you wanna send, you can. I really appreciate that. That was very, very, very soft, thoughtful, and sweet. Thank you. Um, I want to remind you guys again, uh, July 10th is coming up very, very soon. It's not this Friday, it's the Friday after. Uh, if this resonates for you, even if you don't have any fucking clue what we just said, but you're like, wow, that was like something struck a chord today. You're supposed to be at the next event. Okay. Like we can't tell you how many people show up. They're like, I'm not quite sure why I'm here. Something said yes to be here. I'm going to trust that. Please trust that that that's the big like intuitive guidance is not something to mess with and it's something to really cultivate and start realizing how guided we can be there's a reason you guys are in this group there's a reason you're watching this live right now there's a reason it's happening right now in your life and not five years ago okay there's a timing to these things there's an organization to this thing we call energy and it's very very beautiful when you start noticing it so we really, really want to cordially invite you to come participate. Again, it's July 10th on a Saturday. You can go buy a ticket right now at satoriprime.com forward slash live or intuitivemind.live if you want to do it that way. However, if you do want to uh, save yourself some money again, we've authorized the team to uh, have some discount checkout, checkout links ready for you. So just say contact me and the uh, comment box there. Um, and then Nikki, Corey, or Jasmine will reach out to you. Um, if you have some questions about our event, they can schedule a call with you that's complimentary um, and even give you some guidance on, you know, they work with people in transformation all the time. They listen to so many stories and whether it's our program or whether it's some book or some other course you should be doing, like that that's what this is about, guys. It's about giving value, giving service to people and helping people understand what can be r really what we has become, what what is rather times very complicated, right? Like. It is out of integrity to train people in something that you haven't embodied yourself. The reason we can make this level of work available to you guys is because for 20 years, nonstop, we have been participating in this level of work within ourselves. So when something is cultivated in here, it can be transmitted to other people. Like, like my wife said, it is, you don't become a 10 year old company and put that much investment of time and money within yourself to to not serve other people. That's the only reason you do it. So uh, we want you to know that that's what's behind the scenes here. Even if we're sometimes clunky about about getting the right emails out or the right post out, like, you know, that's just how it is. Like there is a life happening back here as well. And we're trying to manage things the best that we can. So um, that's the invite to you guys. If you need support from anybody in our team, again, just let us know in the comment box in some way, shape or form. Thank you for being here today and your patience and your awareness. Yeah. And discount checkout links are only available until Friday. Ah, yes. That, <laughs> yes. Thank you for the reminder. Yes. The, those discount links are only available to Friday. Get your ass moving <laughs> and, uh, you know, get to get to the event. I'm very excited because I know I have enough, uh, this week and a half to cultivate what's happening in my system. And I know I get to share that with you guys at the event as well from from the new level of awareness that's that's developing in my system so i'm very excited to see uh what arises and i'm um yeah just very excited to to be in that space with you guys again so love you lots thank you to my wife for being here and for all the beautiful words and uh yeah guys absolute pleasure we'll see you next week bye everybody